In a previous slideshow, we examined relationships between quantitative data, in particular different types of regression. Regression makes no sense when we use categorical data. Still, categorical data is quite important, and we need to find ways to make sense of it. Categorical data are data that are labels, names, or other non-numerical outcomes. Gender, male, female, car make, American, European, Japanese, and one's response to a survey question, agree, disagree, no opinion, are all categorical variables. This slideshow teaches you how to examine relationships within categorical data. A survey of 16 adults asked, of American, European, and Japanese, which make of car do you prefer to drive? To organize the data, we create a frequency table, a table that counts the number of each response. The quantity of each response can be expressed as a relative frequency, which is a percentage of the total amount of data. A table of relative frequencies is called a relative frequency table. To find the relative frequency, Divide the frequencies by the number of data n, which is, in this case, 16. Categorical data can be represented visually in graphs. One method is called a bar chart. A bar chart displays the distribution of a categorical variable with each bar's length proportional to the frequency of its represented category. A bar chart is similar to a histogram, except that there is space between the bars, which does not occur in the histogram. The relative frequency bar chart uses decimals or percentages along the vertical axis. The more information that is gathered, the more relationships can be explored. So we also include the gender of each respondent. We can now create a two-way table, also called a contingency table, showing the distributions of the two variables, with the three car preferences as rows and gender as columns. This creates six cells, and the frequencies for each cell are called a joint distribution. We then add up the rows and columns. These totals are called marginal distributions, named because they are in the margins of the table. Note that the row totals 4, 5, and 7 add to 16, while the column totals 7 and 9 also add to 16. It is always a good procedure to be sure that the row totals and column totals are equal to ensure you didn't make a mistake in addition. The two-way table can also be viewed in terms of percentages. Each joint distribution is divided by n, the number of data, in this case 16. Marginal frequencies are computed the same way. In the percentage two-way table, the sum of the rows and sum of the columns will always be 100%. The two-way table can also be viewed as a conditional percentage distribution. We calculate the percentage of gender given the condition of car preference. Given that someone prefers an American car, two out of four or 50% of them are male and 50% are female. Given that someone prefers a European car, one out of five or 20% of them are male and 80% are female. And given that someone prefers a Japanese car, four out of seven or 57% of them are male and 43% are female. The conditional percentage distribution can also be viewed in terms of the condition of gender. Given that someone is a female, two out of seven or 29% prefer American cars one out of seven or 14% prefer European cars, and 57% prefer Japanese cars. Given that someone is a male, two out of nine or 22% prefer American cars, four out of nine or 44% prefer European cars, and 33% prefer Japanese cars. The conditional percentage distribution can be viewed as a graph which is called a relative frequency segmented bar chart. One bar is drawn for each category of the condition variable. In this case, the condition variable is gender, so there are two bars. We then divide each bar into three segments for the car preference based on the gender. Each segment is proportional to the percentage of entries of car preference. Each bar will have a total height of 100%. 
it is important that each segment is labeled with a different color or shading. The segmented bar chart is viewed on this slide in terms of the condition of car preference. Since there are three car preferences, there are three bars. Each bar is then divided into two segments for male and female. Again, the height of each bar is 100%. Too much information can be worse than too little information in the world of data. How do you decide what kind of table to use and what type of graph to use to illustrate your data? It is best to choose the important condition when deciding on which segmented bar chart to show. For instance, if a Toyota dealer were interested in this data, he might want to use the condition of car preference to isolate the male-female percentages of people who prefer Japanese cars. However, if the editors of a woman's magazine were interested in the information, they might only want to use the condition of gender to isolate the car preferences of females. Let's examine data with much larger numbers. This table represents the years of schooling completed by Americans, broken down by age, in thousands of people. There are three age groups, 25 to 34, 35 to 54, and over 55. There are four education categories, did not complete high school, completed high school only, had one to three years of college, and graduated college. The two-way table has three times four or 12 joint frequencies. Column and row totals are given, and the sum of each is 175,230. We now compute the marginal distribution of schooling in terms of percent. We divide our population into our four educational groups and divide each row total by 175,230. It should be clear that the largest category is completing high school only at about 33%. We could also create a marginal distribution table of age in terms of percent. Our table would have three entries with each column total divided by our grand total of 175,230. We now illustrate our data with a conditional distribution of education based on the condition of age. A segmented bar chart is used. There are three bars, one for each age group, each divided into four segments for the schooling category. Our percentages, shown in the table and bar chart, take our joint distributions, the cell totals, and divide them by the column totals. The bar chart makes it clear that if a person is in the 25 to 34 age group, he has a much greater chance of having graduated college than someone in the 55 and up age group. We can also illustrate our data with a conditional distribution of age based on the condition of education. A segmented bar chart is used. There are four bars, one for each age group, each divided into three segments for age category. Our percentages, shown in the table and bar chart, take our joint distributions, the cell totals, and divide them by the row totals. The bar chart makes it clear that if a person did not graduate high school, he has a 51% chance of being in the 55 and up age group, while if a person graduated college, he has about only a 23.6% chance of being in that 55 and up age group. Statistics can sometimes lie. An interesting example is called Simpson's paradox. A paradox is an argument that apparently contradicts itself and yet might be true. We have two airlines, Alaska Airlines and America West Airlines, that primarily service the west coast of the United States. Each flies into Los Angeles, Phoenix, San Diego, San Francisco, and Seattle. Data is generated as to how many flights of each airline fly into each city and how many are on time. The data is shown in the tables on the slide and was true for one year in the 1990s. The question is, which airline has the better on-time record in terms of percentage? We total the on-time arrivals and flights for each airline and show that Alaska Airlines had 3,775 out of 4,373 on-time arrivals, a percentage of 86.3%. America West Airlines had 7,225 out of 8,151 on-time arrivals, a percentage of 88.6%. 
so it is relatively close, but America West can brag a better on-time arrival percentage than Alaska Airlines, correct? Not so fast. We break down the on-time flight percentage for each airline for each city. The results show that for each of the five cities, Alaska Airlines has a higher percentage of on-time arrivals than America West Airlines. If Alaska beats America West in every city in terms of on-time arrival percentage, shouldn't Alaska Airlines have the claim as the better on-time percentage? This is an example of Simpson's paradox, named after Edward Simpson, who discovered it in 1951. It doesn't occur often, but it illustrates that relationships between categorical variables must be examined in detail.